Welcome to Pathways to Success, a program that supports micro, small, and medium enterprises here on BNC, the Billionario News Channel. I'm Mai Rodriguez. Commuters in the Philippines face significant challenges due to insufficient public transportation, traffic, congested urban areas, lack of pedestrian infrastructure, and many more. Wasted time during commutes ultimately impacts workforce productivity. One company that stepped up to offer an alternative is the pioneering ride-hailing and tech-enabled transport service, Ancas. Today, we look into the entrepreneurial success of Ancas with its co-founder and CEO, George Rayoka. Good morning, George, and welcome. Thank you, Mai. Thanks for having me here. Appreciate you coming over on a day like this, a stormy day. Yeah. Bagyong bagyo, I hope. Uh, no trouble for you coming over? No, no, not okay. at all. So first, oh, there's many uh, things to talk about uh, in terms of improving transport infrastructure, inclusive mobility, and sustainable transport, which are part of your advocacy, right? But first, let's talk about you as an entrepreneur. Your parents are entrepreneurs. So tell us, uh, how did they influence you? Um, I think it was a dinner table conversations, right? Um, we'd always have dinner every night. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, instead of talking about my schoolwork, we'd be yeah. talking about, you know, economics, the country. Uh -huh. um, they started as early as? I don't know, when I was maybe 10. Wow, okay. Yeah, so, and then also movies. My dad would always make me watch movies that were a little bit more mature in mm -hmm. terms of themes, and then he would explain it to me afterwards. Yeah, yeah. And I'd rewatch it again. So I think my, my comprehension for, you know, complex problems um, was really kind of, you know, it was honed during the time of my dad. So I really owe it to my parents and, you know, making me a little bit more precocious. Mm -hmm. So it really started at home. Yeah. Okay, so tell us what was your first business venture? You know, I started working when I was third year high school. Um, I actually started working as a um, musical scorer. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would put in music for a lot of the TV shows. Oh. Um, I'm, no, I'm not sure if you remember, it's TGIS. Oh, <laughs> yeah. back in the day. Yeah, okay, so I yes. was the one who put the music there. Oh. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so that was my one of my first jobs. Um, and I did it for fun because I had a huge CD collection and my brother was a director. And he said, hey, why don't you make use of your CD collection um, and, and, and you put music. So yeah. that's, that's how I started. Yeah, yeah, it's all your love for music as well that influenced yes, for yeah, sure. your very first job. Okay, um, let's talk about Angkas. Um, let's talk about the business model that you followed for Angkas. Where did the idea come from? Actually, the idea came from, well, the, the issue or the problem came from my wife, who is Singaporean. Mm. Um, and when she finally, when she moved to the Philippines, she couldn't stand the commute. It would take about an hour and a half to get to work or get anywhere from like one city to the next, even if it was a few kilometers away. Yeah. And I kind of was in a state of learned helplessness, right? For me, it was just normal. I was desensitized with the traffic. And she said, how can you live this way? And then, you know, I realized that, you know, I, I guess I, I just got used to it. But apparently, a lot of people um, was thinking what she was thinking. Mm -hmm. um, and we saw that there were so many other, um, uh, you know, uses of motorcycles in Thailand, in Vietnam, in Jakarta. And that's why Angkas was born. Okay, imagine how we lived back then without Angkas. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, um, technology is a big part of the business. So were there any challenges developing the app? Um, you started, uh, it, it, you're, you're seven years old already, right? Yes, Okay. seven plus years old. I think we're all, but we're all challenges. <laughs> <laughs> We've, um, you know, like a startup, an entrepreneur, you face challenges every step of the way. I don't think there was ever a, you know, there are quick wins, um, but right after you solve a problem, there's going to be an, another problem right after that. Um, in fact, um, when we first started Ancas, we had a problem of acceptance, not just by the regulators, yeah. because we were shut down many, many times um, throughout our journey. Uh, and we really, you know, pushed the advocacy for regulation. That was our main advocacy, is to start regulating the Habal Habal. Um, but more to that, even you know, in the beginning, our top customers, the customers that would use us every day, so we contacted them and asked them, hey, 
um, can you, you know, promote us or refer us or, you know, po post us on social media? And they're like, no, 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 we can't. I'm like, but you use the service. You like the service, mm -hmm. right? And I'm like, yes, I love the service. Like, so why won't you post us? Oh, because I can't tell anyone that I'm riding a motorcycle. So they would actually get dropped off three houses away oh. from their destination. Okay. Because one, they were afraid that their parents would, you know, scold them. Um, number two, they were also like a little embarrassed mm -hmm. um, to, to show their friends that they were riding a motorcycle. Mm -hmm. So that just really speaks to the stigma of motorcycles at that time. You know, yeah. it was an informal sector, it still is largely. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people were using it, but they weren't really, you know, yeah. um, proud, I guess, customers. But has that improved though? You mentioned the stigma and also the huge apprehensions because motorcycles, um, okay, people think, of course, they're accident prone. Uh, there were road safety concerns. Uh, did that change at all? For sure. I think um, that changed dramatically. Um, you know, f a few years ago, we were getting shut down. Nobody would partner with us. Um, nobody thought the service was good. Mm -hmm. Everyone, <clears throat> everyone, when I would say, talk about motorcycles, it would be with a gasp, right? They would be like, oh, you're doing <laughs> motorcycles, why? You know, it's, it's, it, was, it really came with such negativity. But I think because of the advocacy, because of us pushing it, and making sure that we had the right regulation, we were self-regulating, essentially. Um, and, of, and the training that we put in. Mm -hmm. You know, when we started ANCAS, um, you know, the government tried to shut us down because of safety reasons, um, and they wouldn't put a stamp or certify what was largely um, accident prone because of the habal habal, yeah. because of the informal. But we, if you really go down to the core, they were accident prone because they weren't being trained. They were allowed to buy motorcycles without any form of training. Mm -hmm. And when we started building our training module, we realized that there was no training to pillion a passenger. There was only training to ride a motorcycle. So we went all the way up to the United States. Mm -hmm. You know, we were searching all over the world, like even Honda, Suzuki, Kawasaki, um, the likes of Indonesia, Thailand, Vietnam, even the big motorcycle taxis, because in other countries, this was widely accepted. Nobody had thought of creating a training module for yeah. Pillion. So we went to a company in the United States called Total Control. And they actually did motorcycle safety training for the U.S. Marines. So that is what was applied for ANCAS? We created the curriculum together. Okay. Um, we, of course, localized it to the conditions, the road conditions here. And that yielded a 99.997% safety record. Mm -hmm. That's you know, really, really high. That's an accident rate of 0.003% across hundreds of millions of rides already. Mm -hmm. You know, we joked that, we actually had a campaign uh, jokingly saying that we're safer than condoms because condoms <laughs> is only 98% safe. Uh -huh. And that really spelled the difference, right? And before ANCAS, there was no insurance for small bikes. Imagine, mm -hmm. we had millions of motorcycles, 18 million or 15 million at that time, motorcycles in the country for scooters and underbones, 99% of which are low-income households, and nobody would insure them. Mm -hmm. So we had to invent and create, lie, beg, you know, cheat and steal, yeah. Yeah. you know, really go after the insurance companies and, you know, beg them to come and take a chance on us. Mm -hmm. And a few did. And I'm happy to announce that right now, that's really the industry standard. Yeah, a pioneering in so many ways, okay? Um, well, let's talk about how to file complaints through the app and the other challenges encountered. But first, we have to take a short break. Coming up next, we will discuss how ANCAS is working, not only to provide safe and reliable transport, but also support the needs of small businesses. Please don't go away. Pathways to Success will be right back.
Hai anak. Ma, bibili na kami ni Daddy ng chicken ice cream. May spaghetti ba tayo later, hot dogs? Siyempre, mawawala ba yun? Happy birthday! Mars, grabe yung pila. Palipas kaya muna ako sa mall. Ano tara? Birthday ni Joey eh. Hindi pa ako nagluluto. Paano na to? Taas pa ng surge. Magkakas ka naman kaya? Angkas? Yung bagong mobile app na pwede mag-book ng motor. Walang traffic dito sa Angkas. Welcome back to Pathways to Success. We are still with Angkas CEO and co-founder George Royeka. Okay, George, let's talk about your goal, uh, which is also to provide jobs for Filipinos. How many Angkas riders do you have to date? I think we have about 55,000 Angkas bikers, and all of them are out of the poverty line. Mm. We're very proud of that metric. And I yeah. think we've created a system in Angkas to really do two things, right? If you have a skill, and if you have hard work, si pagatsaga, then you can take care of your family. Mm -hmm. And I think um, this system is something that should be espoused all over the country. True. Yeah. Yeah. And during the gap, you were telling me uh, about the training for your riders uh, and the safety, yes. uh, which is 99.9%. Um, that, that's very impressive, right? So uh, tell us about how long do they undergo the training and also the, how do they um, apply the change in mindset? Actually, mindset is very, very important. You know, that's, you know, the, the root, I think, I think, uh, my personal opinion, the root of all, the root cause of all evil is really lack of education. Um, we've proven, if you look at the habal habal statistics coming from the LTO, or motorcycle statistics in general, accident rates are very, very high. But because we applied training, stringent training and stringent regulations all throughout, and retraining, throughout mm -hmm. the entire process, we've been able to bring that you know, down significantly, mm -hmm. like exponentially. And mm -hmm. this is because of training. They, we go through several um, stages. The first is a uh, skills assessment. So they go through a practical course that, that um, mimics road conditions, bumpy roads, uh, yeah. close roads, um, you know, uh, short, short uh, turns. And then after that, um, we gauge what their skill level is. Mm -hmm. Then we also check their bikes to make sure that their bikes are roadworthy. Because many of the bikes here may or may not be worth mm -hmm. road roadworthy. Then we do a lecture in terms of overall safety rules and regulation and safety mindset. So all of this happens in a day, surprisingly. Okay. It used to be more than that, but we were able to bring it down in a day over time. And that's been proven to be very, very effective. Uh -huh. And you know, there is also a kind of ripple effect because before you would see this, right? A lot of the bikes would even go on the, would stop on the pedestrian lane in the middle of an intersection. Mm -hmm. So before they would see an Angkas biker actually stop before the pedestrian lane and a lot of the other bikers would actually move back, right? Mm -hmm. It's, um, it's they, they mimic, they imitate what's happening on the road. So mm -hmm. I think this whole um, training um, really changes people's mindset. Yeah, but I the, hope. Yeah, I hope the other riders also apply these things. You know, we've we've actually trained probably more than half a million bikers already, applicants, but we only have a fraction of that that goes into our platform. Mm -hmm. But at least, so to speak, na na bahira na sila ng konting mm -hmm. training. So hopefully there are more disciplined riders mm -hmm. on the road because of our training platform. Okay, you've come a long way in terms of addressing commuter needs. Um, but let's talk about the support for your riders. For example, if when they're starting, they don't have a motorcycle, do you have programs to support them? Do you know there are 2 million motorcycles that are sold every year? 99% um, of them are loans. And this is something that every single family, household, uh, low-income household, um, purchases. This is mm -hmm. their ambition to purchase. So, kung gusto mong umangat, di ba, yung buhay mo, ma, ma, taas, maangat ka sa kahirapan, ang unang-unang binibili mo talaga motorsiklo. So, maraming maraming motorsiklo sa market. But we do have partnerships with many dealerships. Usually, pag uh, you're applying for an angkas, uh, as an angkas biker, may degree of pre-approval yan eh. Okay. Because angkas bikers are like SMEs. Mm -hmm. Right, so they're business. They're using motorcycles for business. There are 18 million motorcycle owners in the country. 
99% oh, of them are low-income households. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe 2 million are estimated habal-habal nationwide. So there's really a large market of people that use motorcycles as a means of livelihood. And what we've done is just make it uniform, um, have the right regulation mm -hmm. to be able to make it sustainable, mm -hmm. which is why we're able to take them out of the poverty line. In fact, just last November, we were able to finally um, get the approval from government to actually make them part of Pag-ibig. Mm -hmm. um, about a month ago, they are now part of Social Security, SSS. So all of my bikers right now have benefits till the, till the day they die. Yeah. Okay. Right? And next, next month, I think we're working on PhilHealth. So right now, these informal workers are now part of the formal economy. That's right? very They're good now to know. formal. Yeah. Um, they're recognized by the government, duly recognized, and now they can take on low interest loans, they can take on you know, uh, different types of benefits, you know, and really contribute to the economy. So as CEO of ANCAS, can you say that this job can be sustainable for the riders? And uh, tell us, how much do riders earn in a day? So a full-time rider on average earns about 1,500 pesos. Mm -hmm. That's three times the minimum wage. And if you go down to the provincial areas, there's a slight discount, maybe anywhere between 800 to 1,000. But of course, the cost of living in provi pro the pro provinces are much lower. Mm -hmm. So it's highly, highly sustainable. Mm -hmm. In fact, the system, I hope, is applied to every single informal worker. Right? There are about 17 million informal workers in the country, from boatmen, tattoo artists, masseuse, yeah. sari sari stores. And what we've done is not necessarily just a motorcycle taxi platform. It's a system on how to recognize informal workers. Mm -hmm. And if you're able to implement the system, we can create millions of jobs overnight just by simple mm -hmm. recognition. And this is the work that we've done with the government. You know, from before being the government being very suspicious in terms of our intention, in terms of our capability, to now working hand in hand with the government. And imagine that's how many bureaus that I've just discussed. Yes. SSS, Phil <laughs> yeah, Health, Health. Pag -E Pag -E We've also been working with Tesda mm -hmm. for motorcycle for business. So the curriculum of Tesda, we're the ones that train their trainers. So we've really come a long, long way in yeah. terms of being enemy that's of the true. state. So now they're best friends. Yeah, in very terms of commendable. You've talked about the support for the riders, the benefits for the riders, but we have to take a very quick break. Stay tuned to see how innovation helps Angkas to stay ahead of the game. Pathways to Success will be right back. Welcome back to Pathways to Success. We are still with George Royeka, CEO of ANCAS. Now, George, app development is constantly evolving. How does ANCAS uh, or the ANCAS app, how does it adapt to the new trends of mobile app development? You know, we were shut down three times every single year. Right after we got legalized, the pandemic happened for two years. Mm -hmm. 2022, we had unfettered you know, um, operations in terms of you know, legalization, no issues and regulation. But then our app broke oh. because of the, the, the demand, the rising demand. Yeah. So we actually had to build a new app from the ground up with a new architecture. Uh -huh. But you know, this created a solution for us and now we're stronger because we have a full development team. All Filipinos, developed by Filipinos and something we're very proud of. And against our competition that's global, 
we're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. So we're creating the algorithms in-house. This is proudly Filipino-made product. And this is something that hopefully we can you know, teach the Filipinos how to look at it from a perspective of scale and also world-class thinking. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what are the exciting things that riders and commuters can look forward to with Ancas? Oh, a lot. A lot. I think more benefits, definitely for the bikers. Um, added scale, so we're fixing our algorithm to do mm -hmm. machine learning, AI. Using AI, to yes. Increase, okay. To increase allocation and conversion, right? We're going to be doing a lot of different features for the customers and the bikers. We have just re recently launched Ankars, right? So we have Ankars. a car service as oh, well yes. for bikers to upgrade to once they're, they have enough money to buy okay. a car. So it's really a progression from our, for, for our bikers. We're, and we're also going very heavy on logistics for next year working with institutional partners um, because there is a big gap in LASMA logistics nationwide. Mm -hmm. A lot of even the big couriers are, folk, are outsourced their LASMA to fleet operators. Mm -hmm. So it's something that I think can increase the jobs of, of our bikers mm -hmm. and also give them this path to success. Mm -hmm. Okay, very briefly, can you give us uh, your wish list in terms of how to improve transport infrastructure, support from the government, and sustainable transport? We need constant representation we need a loud voice, consistent voice, to be able to really get this into the minds of the regulators, the gov national government, and the public. So, in fact, I asked the president if we could be part of the national transport plan, which includes us, motorcycle taxis, as part of the entire ecosystem mm -hmm. of vehicles all over the country, which means when DPWH starts creating roads, yes. that is already with motorcycles in mind. So this is the future for us, and I hope that we have consistent representation in the government because you really need the government support to be able to make things happen. Uh -huh. um, and this is about national policy, local um, execution, and this is something that we'll be doing moving forward. Uh -huh. I hope you are heard, like be included in that discussion. I'll never stop talking. <laughs> Thank you for shows like you to be able to you know, give me a platform to spread this Anytime, advocacy. anytime. Thank you for joining us this morning, George. Uh, thank you for sharing your vision, great insights on how to improve uh, the transport infrastructure, our transport system, and for sharing your vision on providing jobs for our fellow Filipinos. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. And that is our episode today. To our entrepreneurs, do not be afraid of new technology. Use it to expand your reach and enhance customer experience. Remember, the road to success is never a straight line. I'm Mike Rodriguez. See you again tomorrow here on BNC, the Billionario News Channel.